I won't stop till I hear him say Warning. The information that we convey in these videos and the content on this page simply provides general consumer information. It is not legal advice or regulatory guidance. It is not intended to sway your personal bias in any way. We are simply just relaying information already available to the general public. We highly suggest you do your own research and draft your own opinion on the topics disclosed in this video breakdown. Without further ado, sit back, relax, enjoy this video breakdown, and if you're not already subscribed to the YouTube channel, consider doing so now. Okay, what is going on, CyperX Advanced YouTubers? Welcome back to the CyperX YouTube page. In today's video breakdown, I'm going to show you another connection that Ripple has to the Federal Reserve. Now, the majority of influencers from what I've seen have only connected Ripple to the Federal Reserve through Michael Barr and the Fedwire Faster Payments Task Force, which are still outstanding connections in my personal opinion. However, the rabbit hole always goes deeper. So in today's video, I'm going to share with you those connections, and then we are going to read some PDFs. And I'm also going to attempt to get you to really, truly understand how early we are into this massive manipulative game that the elites are playing to completely reconstruct our entire financial ecosystem. If you enjoy video breakdowns like this, I would appreciate it if you all took the time to smash that thumbs up button. It does help boost the YouTube algorithm, and I really do appreciate it. Also, I was looking at some of our YouTube statistics and noticed that only 69% of our viewers are subscribed. That leaves roughly about 30% of you viewing this content still unsubscribed to the channel. With that being said, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we ask that you do subscribe to our channel. It's free to do so, and it helps push this content out to other individuals like yourself. So with that being said, sit back, relax, and enjoy this video breakdown. I will link some of the websites that we talk about here in the description down below in case any of you all are interested in doing your own personal research. With that being said, let's jump over to the e ecbeuropa.eu website. Okay. So going up to the top, ladies and gentlemen, we already know that Ripple has been part of a proof of concept utilized by the European Central Bank for CBDCs. Okay. This is an article that reads ESCB Legal Conference 2022 Speakers. Now, who are these speakers and why is this important to pay attention to? Scrolling down here, one of the speakers at this conference is Jess Chang. Jess Chang is a senior counsel at the Federal Reserve Board of Governors. So she is a member of the Federal Reserve as of right now, but who was she before this? She was formerly counsel at the International Monetary Fund, International Monetary Fund, whom we've seen Brad Garlinghouse on stage with, okay? A member from the International Monetary Fund, Ross Lekov, literally mentioned that they are doing partnerships with Ripple for regulatory guidance where she advised on the strategic direction of the fund's fintech working agenda and provided technical assistance to advance law reforms and central bank legislations. Previously, she was deputy general counsel at Ripple, ladies and gentlemen. Prior to Ripple, she was a consul and an officer at the Federal Reserve Bank of New York. So this is massive. And again, she is a speaker at this ECB conference in 2022 that's taking place. So it's just massive to see the connections go deeper than Michael Barr and the Fed now faster payments task force coming over here. Again, something that she said. Now, this is massive because in this statement, she mentions XRP as a virtual currency right here. We're going to get into this. And who was she again prior to working at the Federal Reserve? She was a member of the Deputy General Counsel at Ripple. Okay. So with that being said, coming over here, this article reads how payments law can help drive innovation. Now there's going to be some key words and key vocabulary that I want you all to pay attention to in this article. And I will mention them to you guys as I'm reading it. But this article reads distributed financial technologies, DFTs. Again, this is an important acronym to pay attention to. And protocols are gaining a foothold in important payments and settlement applications in global markets. The software developed by Ripple is one example of enterprise solutions for financial institutions that improves the efficiency of cross-border payments. However, robust DFTs, distributed financial technologies, must be prepared with clear commercial rules that divine and govern with certainty and predictability how the technology is being used to make payments. As discussed further below, business lawyers and technologists alike should take note that commercial rules, as well as requisites, payments, law expertise to craft them, are critical to transforming DFTs from an experimental pilot, this is important, experimental pilots, to enterprise solutions for financial institutions to move real value around the world. We're going to skip the meat of this right here. We're going to go down to this section where she mentions, additionally, financial institutions can use virtual currencies like XRP. This is, again, a deputy governor council at Ripple 
who is now working for the Federal Reserve mentioning that XRP is a virtual currency. The digital asset native to Ripple consensus ledger as a bridging tool that streamlines liquidity for their interbank foreign exchange transaction. More details are available in Ripple's announcement of a successful pilot, here's that word again, of this use case among 12 global banks in October 2016. Using XRP in this way allows financial institutions to reduce their costs, enhance the transparency, and extend the global reach of their cross-border payments. Without the end user payer or payee themselves necessarily having any contact with XRP. Why am I reading this to you and why is this important? Again, mentioning 12 global banks, we see a limiting number of banks that are utilizing XRP in a full production phase as of right now, which I'll go into in just one second. But we come over here to read this article. This is massive right here. And it says the Federal Reserve's interest in distributed ledger technology. In the aggregate, the US PCS system processes approximately 600 million transactions per day, valued at over $12.6 trillion. Given that safe and effective arrangements for conducting PCSs, processes are critical to the proper functioning of the financial markets and to financial stability more broadly, the benefits and risks that may arise with any potentially transformative changes to the PCS process should be thoroughly understood and managed by the relative stakeholders as a part of its core objective to foster the safety and efficiency of the payment system and to promote financial stability to the Federal Reserve. Now, Pay attention to this because I mentioned to you guys in the previous article, the word pilot. Okay. Why is this important? So check this out. So we're going to go down here on this article and I will link this in the description down below. This is a PDF directly from the federalreserve.gov website. And it says the path to adopting new technology, pay attention to what I'm about to say, because this is going to open your eyes to how early we are in this market, ladies and gentlemen, and as an XRP holder or a hodler or an investor in this cryptocurrency space, it is extremely important to not pay attention to what the general herd is doing, getting flooded out of this market and believing these bullish moon boy price predictions are going to happen sometime in 2022, really doing intuitive research and understanding when all of this massive adoption is going to take place and how long you are going to have to hold these digital assets to experience life-changing wealth. It is not going to happen this year, ladies and gentlemen. It is going to be a specific time set in place by the elites, specifically sometime next year. I've mentioned to you guys in 2023, towards the end, coming into 2024, 2025 timeframe. Do your intuitive research and understand how early we are in, in this market, okay? So this article reads, the path to adoption of any new technology including distributed ledger technologies, typically follow several stages of development. Now, these stages are extremely important, so pay attention. Beginning with the proof of concept stage, these proof of concepts are examples of experimental uses of the technology on very small scales in controlled environments. You guys saw prior to this article, I mentioned to you guys the 12 banks that Ripple is testing as of right now. Understanding the potential and limits of technology for specific purposes at this stage, some important aspects of the technology and operations that are critical in production environments, such as scalability or security, may not be fully understood or addressed. Much of the industry has been working on proof of concept since 2016. This date is important in a later article that we're going to get into. Usually particular assets, classes, and use cases, some of these proof of concepts are referenced below. Proof of concepts that show potential may move into the pilot phase. So now we get into phase two. So the first phase is proof of concept. The second phase is the pilot phase. In which the technology could be used for a real transaction. Pilots have limited durations, defined objectives and milestones, and typically also limit the number of participants. Again, that's important, okay? In order to determine how the technology works in production, technologies that are successful in the pilot phase may then move towards the production stage. So now this is phase three or the production stage, okay? Technologies at this stage have the full set of features necessary to facilitate the storage, record keeping, and transfer of the assets being considered. The final stage of the development, or stage four, processes is broad adoption of the technology. by participants in the payments clearing and settlement system. Now, you guys also saw at the top of this PDF, they mentioned that the payments clearing and settlement system operates with roughly about $12.6 trillion as of right now for the Federal Reserve. At the time of the Federal Reserve research team's interviews, most of the distributed ledger technology experimentation was at the proof of concept stage. There have been some announcements of the intent to put distributed ledger technologies into production, okay? So why am I reading this to you and why is this important? Again, the four phases, we see the proof of concept, the pilot phase, 
the production phase, and then the full scale adoption phase. Ladies and gentlemen, coming over here to a PDF from fsa.go.jp, we see 2016 proof of concept with 12 banks. This is again talking about Ripple. Test payments where banks held small amounts of XRP and provided FX conversions. Coming down here in 2017, what do we see? Moving on, Ripple has already gone on to the second phase, evolved the model and built a product. Product reserves the benefits without FI having to hold XRP, leverage local exchanges for FX conversions. And now 2018, we saw commercialization, announced our first pilots underway now. Again, we talked about the four phases, but now let's talk about the production phase. Ripple's XRP, ladies and gentlemen, is in the production phase. And why am I explaining this to you all? Because you need to understand that this stuff takes time. There's many moon boys out there that are getting people's hopes up into believing that there's going to be some massive new all-time high that gets met this year in 2022. Wake up, read the documents, check the dates, do your intuitive research, and do not get manipulated into believing these individuals. We see right here, this article reads, six biggest banks using Ripple XRP products. Again, the production phase, okay? That's phase three. And Ripple has already moved on to the production phase. Coming down here, we see big banks using Ripple, PNC Bank, PNC Bank, one of the top 10 banks in the United States with, with over $6 billion in deposits joined RippleNet in 2016. There's that date again, okay? Coming down here, we also see Santander Bank. We see Standard Charter Bank. We see Culix. We also see the SEB. We see Mitsubishi at UFG Bank. So those are six major banking institutions that are already in the production phase of Ripple technology. Coming over here to just capitalize on PNC Bank, this is from Ripple.com, where it talks about the production phase. PNC Bank, a top 10 bank in the United States, has joined RippleNet. PNC customers will be able to receive real-time cross-border payments. With more than 8 million customers and retail branches in 19 states, PNC has a diverse set of customers, including consumers, small businesses, and large corporates. Ripple technology will have an immediate impact on each of those groups, enabling PNC's commercial clients to receive payments from overseas bank in real time. The bank joined some of the world's leading financial institutions on the network, including Banco Santander, American Express, and SBI-led Japan Bank Consortium, to name a few. Again, this is talking about proof of concept phase, the pilot phase, and then the production phase that Ripple Technology is currently experiencing. Ladies and gentlemen, this is massive. Just to prove to you guys that Ripple has already superseded the pilot phase, we already know that in early 2019, the Saudi Arabian Monetary Authority and the Central Bank of the United Arab Emirates announced in joint statement the launch of their pilot project, Aber. Okay. Now, who's mentioned on this PDF? I've seen a lot of influencers cover this PDF. This is from the World Bank. And if we scroll down to the bottom of this, where they mention Stellar XLM and Ripple's XRP, it says it right here, proof of concept. And it talks about the piloting phase for the CBDC implementation. And we see right here, XLM and XRP. Again, they are on, if not the production phase, which is phase three, they are at least past phase two, which is the pilot phase. Now, coming over here to this article, this one's very interesting. This is from Coindesk, and it reads, okay, Ripple to pilot Bhutan CBDC using private ledger technology. So again, just to show you all that this is going to take time, we see an important date right here, 2023. The test is a part of Bhutan's goal to bring its population to 85% of financial inclusion status by 2023. Ladies and gentlemen, again, proof is in the pudding that this technology is being tested behind the scenes. A lot of people are sleeping on this information, but just understand that it is all in the workings of the global elite agenda. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not going to happen overnight. It is going to happen between now and 2030, and you have to have the mental stability to hold through the volatility, to hold through the FUD, and to really understand what you are investing in. It is the future of our digital financial ecosystem. Last but not least, I want to take your attention to this article. This is from financefeeds.com, and it reads, Ripple's XRP stands to gain with cryptocurrency payment adoption at a 45% rate by 2023. Remember, the last phase of this process, as mentioned via the federalreserve.gov PDF, it says broad adoption phase of the technology by participants in the payments clearing and settlement systems. And it also says right here when that is potentially going to take place, payments adoption at a 45% increase by 2023. 
a research study that finds a gap between consumer expectations and executive priorities in the space. As the use of alternative payments is skyrocketing, banks must urgently embrace the next generation of payments to stay in the race. Consulting company stated, the report founded that nearly 45% of consumers frequently use mobile wallets to make payments and transactions to make payments up from 23% in a poll in 2020. Furthering this trend, global B2B non-cash transactions will increase to reach nearly 200 billion transactions by 2025. This means that nearly half of the consumers of payment services will be using cryptocurrencies in the very near future. The report findings on crypto adoption, if proven true, could help Ripple further its goal of establishing XRP as a leading payments protocol worldwide. And we see specific dates. We see 2023 to 2025. And last but not least, to finish this off, it says days ago, however, the U.S. Federal Reserve has declared that the Fed banks are going to implement the ISO 222 system for Fedwire fund services. So Ripple was locked and loaded two years in advance. Ripple is extremely integrated into our financial infrastructure. They have deep connections in the government, ladies and gentlemen. I've shown you guys those here today. If you guys enjoyed this intuitive deep research dive, explaining to you all how Ripple has deeper connections to the Federal Reserve than Michael Barr and the Faster Payments Task Force. Go ahead and smash that thumbs up button. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. We do appreciate the love and the support. As always, blessings to you guys. Be cognizant, be vigilant, and I will see you guys in the next YouTube video breakdown. Won't stop till I hear him say. Oh, 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 oh,